Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will call the Budget, Finance, and Investment Committee to order. And as always, uh, the first item on our agenda is to approve minutes. Move approved. Commissioner Jernigan, thank Second. you. And seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Any additions or corrections? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Gentlemen, you will find uh, as part of your packet tonight the investment report from our county uh, trustee, uh, Mr. Beatty. There were no bids this month, as you can see from uh, his report. And at the bottom of the page, he is reporting that LGIP uh, is at 0.18. That is probably why he didn't come tonight. <laughs> no, I just said uh, he did not really have anything to report. And, and I didn't feel like he uh, should be here just to give us this report. So I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve the low rate. Thank you, Commissioner Sandlin. Yes. Seconded yes. by yes. Commissioner P. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. That motion carries. Okay, if you will now locate your fund condition report, our finance director, Mrs. Nolan, will begin with the development tax fund. In of March, we received $82,500 for development tax. That brings our total for the year $651,000. Mm -hmm. On the cash balances, we had a total of $186,247,000 with $183,117,000 being operating funds, $3,130,000 being borrowed funds. You look on your uh, report. There is a uh, on the 2011 jail remediation. We're short $921. So there'll be amendment later on uh, requesting money to um, move into the capital projects fund for the jail remediation. That will come later. You will move to the revenue page. There are po mostly positive um, information. The only two negative line items that, you know, that I bring your attention to, it shouldn't be a surprise though, license and permits were at 58% uh, collected of our budget, but most of the time we're above 60%. And then as far as dollars amount, we've only received $736,000 compared to 775 last year at this time. You know, every year preceding that, it's been higher. Of course, the uh, license and permits, the big thing, of course, all that relates to your, your building. And you can see that those costs are, are uh, down below last year. But as a total, we're at 82.79% complete of our budget, of our revenue budget for the year. And that is favorable. Is that the only county face? Those are the only two. Two happy faces and one county yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah. Two to one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're more on the back of the Yeah. These are the other funds. <laughs> You have another sheet attached also, gentlemen, that I think that she will call attention to. Once you're done looking at the revenue review, I'm just um, bringing to your attention the times that we have hit the unassigned fund balance in the general fund. They start adding up after a while. So we <coughs> went into the year with a reduction of 2.8 million in our fund balance, with 1.3 million being a reduction in committed and restricted fund balances, and a 1.4 million being a, a plan draw of the un unassigned. Since the beginning of the fiscal year, we have added to that 531,000. Tonight, you will have five amendments that total 217,000 use of fund balance. Not much to do, but just to inform you. Is that the end of the 
Florence Road project? Yes, that was the one that it was the final and it drew down all of our um, borrowed money. So instead of going out to borrow, we just chose to use the, the balance to complete that project. Any questions for Mrs. Nolan? Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Sandler. I know one thing that you got on here that's already in there on the county official salary thing. We're getting ready to do that. We're going to do that yeah, tonight. These, these things we'll be talking about right. tonight. <clears throat> I think you said that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Okay, gentlemen, we are ready for our insurance report. Uh, Mrs. Stinson, if you will um, locate your packet. Can we start with <clears throat> for the month of March, the per employee per month was $733.13 as compared to prior year of $754.95. Care here cost per employee per month for March was $30.21 compared to $41.30 for prior year. When you combine the two, the total per employee per month was $763.34 compared to $796.24. On a year-to-date average, we are at $697.74 per employee per month. Um, and when you include the care here in that, it rises to $730.22, but we're still trending below prior year at this particular time. Our net OPEB obligation has risen to $38,780,650. When will we see it? When can we hope to see it start leveling from what we have done so far? The um, proposal, whenever uh, Gatsby first began, was that we would see a $6 million reduction in a 10-year period through making these changes. Um, so we'll continue to do the actuarial studies on an annual basis to see that we're achieving the goals that were set for. Did you have anything to add to that? Yes, also the way that, that you're working this, it's an increase of about 11 million in a year where right. you would have seen 26 million increase in a year. That's, I mean, you, you are seeing. It's still going up, but not it's, 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 it's going up arithmetically instead, instead of geometrically. About that. <laughs> 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 Means slower. <laughs> it's going up about a million dollars a month. Well, it's 11 yeah. it's 1 .1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be 26 million a year. Yes. We can move to the fund 266 report if you're ready. And year to date, we're at 94% of the prior year. We had $116,378 paid out in the month of March. That reflected 53.4% of that was actual workers' comp, um, and OJI reflected the balance of medical payout in the total and then there was some settlement but it, it was small in proportion gentlemen any further discussion on the financials seconded by commissioner p all in favor please say aye aye, aye. 
Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Mrs. Stinson now has a, rec a recommendation uh, to increase the stop loss level on the medical plan. We start with the first page just to kind of give an over historical overview of where we've been in stop loss. Um, you'll look that we originated with stop loss at $50,000 in 1998. We've taken incremental steps, um, moving up to 100,000 beginning in the year of 2000, and then we moved to 350,000 beginning in 2006. And then we took an additional $20,000 increase in 2007 and another $10,000 increase to come out to $380,000 in 2009. Beginning with the change in 2007, those incremental increases were to offset any increase in rate, which is why those were taken at that time. I've done a study of what our loss ratio has been over the past four years. And if you return to the second page, I'd like to walk you through that. Looking at the last four years, which include two years at a pooling level of 370,000 and the current and prior year being at 380,000, if you look at the aggregated number, you'll see that the actual premium for that four year period was over $2 million. It was $2,088,237. Our reimbursement for that same period was 800 and. Yeah. Just for my sure. clarification, that that 370 is that when one person hits the that 370 that is correct it's individual stop loss or so. a bunch of people no we don't carry bunch, aggregate bunch. we don't okay. carry aggregated uh, and, stop and loss. that just means that when we when an individual hits that then this reimbursement is. starts dollar for dollar okay right so the actual reimbursement so that four-year period was eight hundred fifty nine thousand six hundred and twenty nine dollars and you will see that in the first three years of that four-year period we we're actually paying out a considerable amount of premium proportionate to our reimbursements. Mm -hmm. um, statistically, based on information of uh, Evergreen Consulting that I acquired through Cigna, um, anytime you get over 2,000 lines, you can expect to see a large claim hit about every four years. And so we are true in that aspect based on this information. Um, that gives us a total loss ratio of 41.17%. Uh, our current rate that we pay on a per employee per month basis is $9.54. On an illustrative level, level, I had asked that Cigna go back and increase that amount to $750,000 for that same four year period. So for every individual, it would be $750,000 with a dollar for dollar reimbursement beyond that. And you can see that that drops our premium down to $1,104,250. Our reimbursements also decrease to $351,363. And it changes our loss ratio to 31,000, I mean 31.82%. There's a premium to reimbursement comparison um, below that box. And it compares the actual to the illustrative. When you look at premium, it would have been a savings of $983,986 for that four-year period had the individual stop loss level been $750,000. The reimbursements would difference was $508,266 and the savings to the county would have been $475,719. And that also takes into account those additional claims that you would have picked up and paid in your insurance plan as well. Um, so the net savings is $475,000. When they, when they do an actuarial review of our book of business, there's certain tables that they look at. One of those is the expected large claim, which I referenced earlier. The other is how many number of claims can you expect to see within a given year. If you'll look at the claim projection box, it says that for a pooling level of $380,000, Based on our population, we should see almost four claims per year exceed the 380,000. When you look at what our experience has been, we see that when we were at 370,000, we had two claims in one year. We didn't have any the following year, and we had one claim the last year, um, and then one in our current year. When you adjust that under the illustration out of those four years, we would have only had the one claim that would have exceeded the level. Um, based on the information here, um, it's my recommendation that given 
that we, we have a defined risk. We don't see a lot of volatility in our claims and in our risk pool that it better suits us to increase um, our stop loss amount to offset what our premiums are and to achieve a greater savings in our stop loss arrangement that we have. There is this one large claim present currently that you'll see identified in our current year. Um, I have confirmed today with Cigna they, that they do expect to have that paid by the June 30th deadline, which is key because if it doesn't, then it rolls to the next plan year. And I would um, suggest that possibly we put a contingency on this approval if it's so approved that it is a contingent upon the payment of that occurring by June the 30th. And that gives us just protection there to revert back to our current level if that doesn't occur. Would that be just for that one person? For that one, the contingency? Yeah. No, if, if, if for some reason, which we've gone through the process and they've given me great assurance that it won't occur, um, we, would, we would remain at the $380,000 level for the upcoming plan year. Okay. And then make the recommendation the following year to take the increase. What's it do to the premiums? Um, it cuts them in half. If you will look at the, the rate, <coughs> currently we pay uh, $9.55 per employee per month. It drops the rate to $5.05 per employee per month. But you're saying on the average, we'd, we'd save, we would have saved 475000 is that right? Correct. Wow. And I actually broke it out on a, a yearly basis. Um, let's see if, I if you go in and you, you back out, because that 475000 shows that large claim in that average as well. So I went in and I said, okay, if we take the premium savings and look at what additional monies we would have paid out of the plan, what would our net savings have been on a, a, a basis of a year? So for 0708, the savings would have been $244,160. For 08 to 09, it would have been $231,544. And for 09 to 10, it would have been $116,219. And then for this particular year that we're in, um, there would have been an additional cost to us of $116,200. So on an aggregated basis, that's how we arrive at the 475000 that's reflected here. So what you're asking us to do is to change that for the oncoming year? Yes, begin with our July 1st stop loss year to mm -hmm. increase the individual stop loss level to 750000 We talked about this in the insurance committee and we could always change back next year right. if we weren't happy. Stop loss is a one year basis. And typically, you know, I'd use the the example of, you know, when you it depends on your risk tolerance. It's like when a stock goes bad, do you sell everything or do you do you ride it? And I would not recommend that if we have one bad year that we make a, a knee jerk reaction and reduce. We need to have two years in a row bad before we would ever consider making a change. Since you only have one <coughs> claim that's over the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar limit, what if you raise that that level even a little bit higher? Um, I'd actually asked for a study to be done, and I, I had spoken with Ms. Nolan about that. Um, the increase to 750000 is a, is a substantial, it's $350,000. Um, I think that doing it incrementally may be better suited for the risk tolerance level, um, and then it also gives a demonstration purposes. I had gone up to a million dollars um, and just for an example, if we were to go to a million, it would drop it to um, $2.68 per employee per month. So the savings, um, the current premium is at $538,620, and that would take the premium to $151,409. So it, it was something I had considered, but I just thought this may be the best place to start. And then if we see in two years it trends that way, take additional increase. Well, you said some large organizations even have no right. loss. You call it. They, they go what's called naked in the industry, which means they have no insurance, no stop loss insurance at all because the risk, and they have adequate reserves for a bad year. Well, you're saying on the average that we would, could expect four large losses per year? No. Is that one in one four. every four years. One in every four right. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that this year. 
Right, and that happens to be the model that we fall into right now. But if you look at these other years on the excess claims, we actually fall under the expected number of large claims on an annual basis based on actuarial um, tables that they look at. What, was there any uh, negative uh, questions in the insurance committee on this that, uh, or with discussion that was against doing this? No, um, I think that it was it was approved, obviously, and I know that Commissioner Jordan had indicated, you know, just the nervous feeling, for lack of a better way, saying it, that it makes you assess whenever you take on this um, this change, and that was the reason why I felt like it was important to bring this historical information. I didn't have that available to insurance, and I don't know if that helps in the process of consideration or not. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty bold move to go from 380 to 750, and that's kind of like that's a leap as far as I'm concerned. Right. <coughs> I definitely wouldn't want to go with none at all and, and a million given even farther out there. So. Yeah. It looks, just looking at the historical values, it appears that, you know, when the change was made, uh, you know, you see that at one year you took on an additional $250,000 um, when you moved from 100000 to $350,000. So, you know, it may just be in building the confidence of the program the first couple of years, and then when it was brought in up to 350000 that was based on some of the information that I had provided today as well. What do you think about it, Matt? I think we ought to accept our recommendation $750,000 contingent upon this one large claim being made out in this fiscal year. Well, on the average, we've got three good years coming, right? Well, <laughs> according to the statistics, we don't hold me to it. But uh, you guarantee well. that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's the way it is well, on life insurance. Too. Well, remember, it means in three more years, we'll drop it to 100000 yeah. well, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. If we're going to play the odds. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. Any further discussion? Uh, yes, gentlemen, uh, the motion and the second is with the contingency that that claim be settled. Just as the mayor stated, okay. Can you explain that a little further? I mean, do they have the option to not pay that during the fiscal year, or is that? It's not an option. Let me, I'll, I'll give you a couple of things that can affect that. Like on this particular instance, because of the size of the claim and the administrator, what they will do is, first off, the hospital will conduct an audit before they ever release the bill to the administrator, which is Cigna in this case, and they are looking for proper billing that everything's been captured, so they're doing a compliance audit and things of that nature, and then they release it to Cigna. Cigna then conducts their own audit, provider review, bill review, to ensure that it is um, compliant with standard billing practices. They haven't unbundled certain charges in an effort to obtain more reimbursement, as an example. Um, that process itself can delay the payment. Um, process. The other side of it is they, um, when they're doing their stop loss, when they set the, the price on stop loss, it's based on certain assumptions. So there is a protective nature of flooding in the plan with unpaid claims. So you certainly uh, wouldn't expect an administrator to try to, you know, reach out to the providers and say, I need you to get the bill in to me so I can get this paid. Um, that's typically looked upon poorly in the industry. You try to let the cards kind of fall where they are and everybody proper um, function with integrity and that the process is what it is and you're not circumventing that for the purpose of the stop loss year. So in our particular instance, we fall under scenario one and that's why it was important to me to, to verify with them that they understand the impact this has to our county, especially in light of the consideration of in, increasing our risk level and that just through their normal process, I wasn't asking them to expedite. Um, but through their normal process, they could give me a, a sense of security that this was going to be paid. And they gave me an absolute answer, but I would still prefer to be more cautious and put the contingency in there. I think that's better served. Okay. Well, you did a good job of explaining that, but I don't know how much more confident I feel. <laughs> you will next year when I tell you what the results were, right? Right, right. <laughs> Any further discussion relative to the motion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye.
Mr. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Ely. Yes. Gentlemen, if you'll turn to section three in your notebook, uh, Mrs. Stinson also has a budget amendment to present. We have the first revision of the uh, health plan for the county of plan on July the 1st. And that particular provision is the inclusion of dependents up to age 26. So in order to do that, we need to do a mailing um, and do a payroll stuffer in order to have proper communication on the special enrollment period. This particular budget amendment is to cover, is to move money out of office supplies into postal charges um, within the insurance department so that we can cover the postage fees for mailing these notices to the Board of Ed uh, medical plan participants. So move, Madam Chairman. Commissioner Sandlin, thank you. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Jordan. Discussion? Just Mr. a Shaker. short question for Ms. Nolan. Is this, again, what you would come call an unfunded mandate, except this is federal, because this is their law that we're getting nothing for, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Ball. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Thank you. We have uh, a budget amendment from the Election Commission. Uh, Mrs. Nolan. It is a small amount, and the only reason we're bringing it to you is because we have already amended the maintenance agreement line item by more than $1,000. But this is a request to move $112 from the maintenance repair vehicles to maintenance agreements. Motion approved. Second. Commissioner Jordan, uh, San Sandlin. Okay. Did it go up? I mean, it should have been what it was bid for for the whole year, I guess. Um, there's probably several. Could have run over a number Yeah, it's probably more than just yeah. one thing in there. Well, it's made its agreements. Election year last year, they probably went over the copies. Yeah. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Gentlemen, we have a budget amendment from archives. Mrs. Nolan. Uh, one of the graduate students uh, left for a job mid-semester. Uh, so in order to provide their coverage in their office, they need additional funds in part-time, which is their other salary and wages. Um, and they are requesting to reduce the amount that they have to pay for those MTSU students by 5385 to move 5000 over to other salary wages and benefits. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Seconded by Commissioner Sandlin. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Nolan, uh, we have the bill for uh, general sessions the from prior fiscal year. Right. This, and I'm, I'm sure you all remember this. About this time two years ago, the legislature proved that if a <coughs> judge, any of the judges, uh, requested a mental health evaluation or treatment for somebody charged with a misdemeanor, that the state would no longer provide those services that the county would be um, charged with those expenses. In 2019, we received no bills. Now, of course, you know, when we were going into the year, we had no experience, no idea how much we had outstanding. At the beginning of this year, I think this is, um, maybe it was either August or September, that we amended uh, funds into that line item, we, we had um, 44700 and at that time all that related to the prior year. So we added extra at that time for still some unknowns and we had admitted up to 97000 to pay the prior year plus any future that might come in. We did receive last month additional billings. So this amendment provides 
payment for those charges plus about $10,000 more just in case something else comes in by the end of the year. Now the state, we, they approved that effective July 1, 2009 and about, was it October, November, October that the state provided us a contract for those charges at a reduced rate. From what I understand is it was about half their prevailing rates. So this bill, there was one bill in particular and from what I can gather it was unusual and the other ones have not um, been to this extent and that we don't have any more folks out there like this one individual that um, was committed at 261 days. Who is, who controls how long this evaluation goes on? I mean, is it well, not, it's, see, it's not just evaluation, it was treatment. The treatment. And it was the treatment okay, that so extended. I thought it was just evaluation, but it's treatment. It's treatment. Well, we thought it was just evaluation, but if you read the fine print, it's for evaluation and treatment. If the mental health department determines they need that treatment, they will keep them down there. But we are, we've talked to the judges, we're going to have some sort of mechanism in place to follow up once we request this mental health evaluation and treatment so that we can see what we're accumulating. So this this was 261 days or something. Mm -hmm. It's just $117,000. It's unbelievable that one person would be down there that long. So uh, but the, you might want to touch on the change of the law where it took out the minimum and maximum days. Was it 30? At least oh, 30 yeah. more. The original law, state law, only allowed when they previously made this and when the state was repaying for this, I think it was two different scenarios, but one, you could only be down there a, minimum, a maximum of 30 days and one 60 days. Now there's no maximum on how many days this, uh, these people can be down there for treatment. Maybe we could talk to our, I know it's too late this year, talk to yeah. our legislators about putting the verbiage back in to have a, a maximum Least. number of days. So we're going to have to find some way to review and determine, you know, uh, if there's something we can do in the meantime to intervene to to stop that uh, <clears throat> continuing quote treatment. When didn't we just approve this contract for a couple more years? Which no, it's, one, it's, one more year. We yes, we approved it for next year. We don't really have any choice. Is it beyond that much more expensive on the outside, private to than well? That's a good question. We don't really know. To be honest with you. Well, my other question but is, where where would you send them for? treatment. I mean, we could get evaluations if it was just evaluations. But there, this is a residential location. We have, excuse me just a second. You, is that your motion, mm -hmm. Commissioner? We have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, second. Okay. Law, uh, Commissioner Schaefer. Yeah, how do we know how good this state office is? How how good they perform? Is it, it who? Okay, you got private people places, and you've got you got private facilities. I would assume too, but they got to be regulated. How does the state regulate itself? I don't know. You know, I mean, those th things. Uh. I understand that there's there's several mental regional mental health centers. Is Dana still here? Hey. I didn't know if you were aware of I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I just I know we could talk about it here all night. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you got no charge. Well, the good news is we don't think there's anybody else in the system right now. <laughs> At least we did get confirmation okay. on that. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Abstain. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Right. Yeah, I, well, I will say that when we get the bills, we do go back to the courts to make sure that there was a judgment for that um, evaluation. And we do do the di due diligence. Like Before we pay said, we got to work on that with our state representatives and senators next year. I mean, we that's, that's just a loose cannon right there. 261 days. Sounds like somebody got forgotten about to me. 
and I kept on getting treatment, and treatment, and slipped to the cracks. And if there had been a, if it had been in years past, and there was a 30-day cap, somebody would have, they would have been moved out at 31 days, you know, with nobody paying the bill. So, absolutely. I just hope somebody got some good help in any right there. They paid a lot of money. Okay, gentlemen, we have a, a budget amendment from General Sessions Court, uh, Judge Brandon and uh, Mrs. Watkins. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> oh, watch out, guys. <laughs> yes, I have um, a budget amendment request uh, to transfer monies from library books, maintenance and repair, communications, and fund balance to travel account for conferences for the Judicial Commissioners and Judge Brandon. It's all within your budget. I'm not going to motion. Except for 850. Except for 850. Yeah. And this is required training. Yes. Correct. Yeah. I'm making a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner P. Seconded by Commissioner Salen. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have two um, budget amendments from Fire and Rescue. Mr. Farley. Uh, the first one that we have in our packet is the $7,500 one. Yeah, I'm requesting to move $7,500 out of data processing supplies into uh, vehicle maintenance. Motion to approve. Uh, Commissioner P, if I could just excuse you. Uh, we do have another one, if you'll look right behind the documentation. Uh, one did not go through the committee process, and you might just explain well, that. Uh, and, what happened is, uh, but we can take this as one vote. The seventy-five hundred. I moved it. Uh, I went ahead and drawed up the seventy-five hundred and had the mayor to sign that. I had two uh, pumper trucks that uh, one of them, the computer went down in it, and it was twenty-six twenty-four, and then the other one, the transmission went down. So I had to get I had th those fixed. During that process, when these two are paid, it will leave that line item empty. So mm -hmm. I'm making the second amendment to move. Uh, Four thousand out of uh, maintenance agreements, and then a thousand out of instructional supplies, which will give me a, a balance of five thousand dollars left in that line. I mean, that should care. Hopefully, will carry me to July first. And gentlemen, if we could consider this as one vote, please. One motion will stand for both. Thank you, Commissioner P, and seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. We we discussed this in public safety, and of course, I got a call that we'd make it. The second yeah. request it was I didn't by the chairman. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. Well, we discussed it. It, it might say yeah. just how tight it was with the yeah. first item. We well, had done that. exactly what we asked him to, so yeah. we appreciate that. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, juvenile detention. Mrs. Duke, hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Mm -hmm. And we can take this as one vote also, um, if you will start with the other supplies and materials. Okay. I have a total of $3,725 coming from uh, printing and stationaries and in-service training. And I'd like to move that into my other supply line item, and that is from within my budget. And I also would like to request $300 from uh, 58900 gasoline into my uh, line item 42, excuse me, 54240 uh, gasoline to uh, have enough funding for the remainder of the year. I just want to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Most of her, both of them. Thank you, Commissioner Jordan. Seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Any further discussion? <coughs> Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Stanley. <coughs> Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. 
Thank you. Gentlemen, other public health and welfare. Uh, this uh, is for autopsy services. Uh, Mrs. Nolan? We're requesting 75000 from the unassigned fund balance for um, two other contracted services, which is the autopsies. Um, as a comparison, as of the end of March 2011, we had already spent 146250 compared to March of 2010, and we'd spent 97000 The year before that, we'd only spent 90000 So there's just been that many more autopsies performed. We've talked about this before. Um, anytime there's a, a request, we I mean we have to do it. So there's really no watching this at all. There's, we have to do it whenever they request. That's what I understand. Yeah, from any of the law enforcement agencies, it's it's pretty much routine if it's a death that they're involved in. We have to do this. But. Explain a step further, and this question's been asked, and for the life of me, I, can, I, I know the answer, but I can't remember why. And the, the cities request this also, don't their police forces? Yes. And yes. we pay for it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, do we get reimbursed anything from the cities on that? No, sir. Not even a, a free crossing guard or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> okay. But even if the estate has money or whatever, I mean, it's still the county responsibility. You can no that's the way we understand the state law. Now, I haven't checked it in a couple of years, but I mean, yes, that's some just the county's responsibility. Right some life insurance or something yeah. that could go back toward expenses. But. Second motion. Commissioner Jernigan, seconded by Commissioner Sandler. It just seemed like Mr. Nunley had said that they were, they were at one time, and whether it's this way now or not, I mean, I don't know, but they, they were just pretty loose about the request for an autopsy each time, you know, and but there's no way we can. I mean, we we just got to pay the bill. We hope they're using their best judgment. Right. We have right. a way of uh, making them uh, not uh, order these autopsies. Who right. who are performing our autopsies? I think this is in the, out of Davidson County. I, I believe we're not doing it here. I don't think. Forensic. Forensic medical. Forensic medical. And it's out of Davidson County. I believe so. I'm Can we request that our county attorney look at, at the law to see if it's worth to get an opinion from uh, the attorney general? This well, well, I'll make a note of that to review that. I, I think we did that, but, we did. but I'll, we did. I'll re revisit that. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Uh, gentlemen, unemployment compensation. Mrs. Nolan. Previously, we um, only had one line item for unemployment compensation, and we would just pay everybody's out of that line item. At one point, we were just we would have about twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. And last year, and the year before, it just seemed to start creeping up on us. So we had amended up to fifty thousand. As the claims were getting pretty extensive this year, we, uh, I decided that we needed to cost center the claims data, or the, the expenses, so that you would know where those claims were hitting, which departments. The 50000 that we had set aside is not sufficient to pay for all the claims that we have today, and of course we've got the end of the year. So this request is to move uh, almost 47000 out of the pooled unemployment compensation into the various departments with also a need of about 60 well 65,573 to come out of fund balance to provide funding for the rest of the year and that is going to 6,000 to planning about a hundred dollars for data processing 62,000 for the sheriff's department 30,000 for jail 3,000 for Correctional Work Center, 4,300 for Juvenile Detention, 7,000 for PAWS, and $121 for the Recreation. So, uh, 
this 112,000 80 is coming from the sheriff's department. Yes. Is there any reason for that? Well, there's well, there was a lot of turnover. Well, turnover doesn't require unemployment mm -hmm. compensation. Um, not uh, normally, but um, the state is very generous with the unemployment compensation benefit. With our money, there's been. Mm -hmm. Well, I would just say that there are people that the state unemployment board has authorized payment when, when um, we felt that they shouldn't. We have appealed and been been down to these hearings repeatedly, and uh, Sonia in particular is very distressed with the liberality of how they are, are approving these people because so, if they're dismissed for cause yeah. they should not be receiving these benefits and that's that's where the dispute comes in mm -hmm. okay so all of these are so when i say turnover call. you would not typically think they did I mean, not leave, leave on their own no relation. i'm saying even if i mean when they don't leave on their own um huh. i mean and they shouldn't be getting it they're getting it and we've not laid off anybody for lack of work. That's the only way they should be drawing this. How many individuals are we talking about? I, I really don't know. It's scattered, except in the, in the sheriff's office, it would be several of them, and I don't know how many of them. Yeah. Well, then you got the, you got the, well, you got the jail, and then you've got the sheriff's department, and then you got the work work center too. So that's small on the work center. So you're looking at ninety thousand dollars combined jail and sheriff's department. Well, no, the law says they're entitled to it if they're discharged for you know, lack of work and they have an opportunity to draw that. But if you discharge a person for cause, then I don't think the law says you have to pay them unemployment. Well, when they go through the unemployment, and, and uh, unemployment people okay it. Well, I mean, we've had some who retire and draw unemployment. And retire. Retire and draw unemployment. Go to another employer. Or as Jeff yeah. said, if they if they leave us and they go to another employer and that employer lays them off, then they will come back to us and then we'll have to pay toward that unemployment. Well, that's been forever, though. That, that, yeah, that, that's that, a piece that, of that, Yes, that's, that's a normal procedure. That but where the real rub comes is when we appear before those administrative uh, law office judges, you might sit down there, and they rule against us. And that's what I just said. They went through the process, and they approved it. They approved it. So these you, these have been approved out of, I mean, through yeah. the system. I mean, you can sit in order all night about it, but they went through the system and approved it. So. Now, Chairman, the sheriff is here. Do you mind make a little latitude? That's the biggest pop right here is $90,000. They could shed some light on that. Sheriff Arnold, Sheriff. Majority, I haven't seen that. Uh, There's the jail and the sheriff's department. I, don't I believe the majority on the sheriff's office side, there was a couple, naturally, with the change of administration. Some things happened, but a majority of these are going to be your crossing guards. They, uh, from what I understand, because no, they, they had to do. Summertime. There was a very, there was a dispute. Okay. There were a few of those. Because we had to redraw the contract up for that. Well, then, uh, several of them, a couple of majors, some other people that uh, we reassigned whenever I took office. They didn't like their assignment. They quit, even though they quit because, what do they call it? Construct uh, Constructive dismissal. Yeah. So they're saying that we did that. Yeah, even people that are quitting are getting unemployment benefits. Yes. And I've gone to great lengths to defend them. No matter American what I come right. up with, it's unbelievable. Even people that are stealing even, time, theft on wrong, uh, wrong uh, false false timesheets, they're getting unemployment. I mean, and they're fired for cause. How so, many employees are we talking about total out of your two departments there? I don't know. I, I would have to put the numbers together for you. I mean, I'll be glad to do it and bring it back to you. But uh, I know that, say, that there was five in the... Uh, bring the fact to next Thursday. In the... Uh, in the beginning that we reassigned that did not like their reassignment and they walked out. 
And then there was two, no, there was three that we ultimately fired. Uh, one cost the county over $500,000. He admitted he, he did not feel that it was his job. And so I fired him for that and it caught, because of what he cost the county. Uh, he got unemployment. That was a lieutenant in booking. Uh, then, uh, well, I, I didn't want you to go through the whole thing there, but I, I, I appreciate that. If you can get it to us, like how many we're talking about next Thursday, full commission or something, that'd be well, I think less than 10. I won't be less here. than 10. 10. So that's it's winding down. I mean, a lot of people are getting reemployed. So does this finish it up? I mean, or is there, this don't finish it up. It I mean, this finish it up for any of us. It could be something next, tomorrow, even in the next right. month. So. There's somebody else. Yeah. This is probably the bulk of it for them since they've had this transition. Yeah. Yeah. And, th and this could come around every time you have an election. I but uh, also, it's not just that. It's it's in management altogether. But I mean, it's the way that I understand. For just it, cause, though, that's what I don't. It works. Is yeah. if they we're winning a lot go of those, up but there, sometimes we're not. Yeah. If they go up there and they just file it because the, we don't pay into the insurance program with the state. We pay it. The county just pays it out, and so. They just say, give it to them. Through this dismissal process, though, they're going through HR now as well. They're, they're not. not right now, but the rest of the county is. I mean, they're handling their appeals, I believe, yeah. now themselves. Mm -hmm. Sonia's not doing that. We're working with Sonia. I am coordinating yeah. with her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I thought y'all had jumped on, I mean, mm -hmm. with HR there. And Sonia has been, has even testified. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's or shocking. Just the issue of the way that well, like, they're handled. Like the commissioner said, we can't do nothing about it, but we can argue about it and fuss about it. And you can argue and fuss, but yeah. they go through the board down there and prove it. I understand. I understand. They're all right, they don't prove it. Yeah. Don't but like you got to look at things. Well, you look at it, but you, you don't have no authority to overrule them. Not right, right now, now, but you got to look at it for it. later. They look at the evil big county with all the money and the poor individual doesn't have a job anymore. Yeah. They give them a check, right. you know. Well, it's Especially actually, when it's coming out of our pile yeah, of money and they're there. Because yeah. a, a, a private business will pay the fee through the state insurance. So the state insurance will pay that money. Mm -hmm. However, since you got, since the county self-insured, that's where they're just, the administrative law clerks are just giving out the money because it's not their problem. Yeah. And it's not making the state's uh, insurance reports look bad on their end because it's not their money, it's not their other funds. But you look at it, six people that are drawing the 275 a week, that's $1,150 a month, you multiply, uh, uh, per that. person, <laughs> you multiply yeah. that by six, and then you multiply that by six more months, and it's up there. Did you look at these six, see if it's justified yourself? And then, hmm? and then it's extended. You, you don't no. Know what it was. no, I'm just saying how much it does cost. Motion approved. No, we've got a motion. No, we do not. Oh, I thought we did. She's it written down. I looked at it. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Jordan Second. and seconded from Commissioner Sandler. I'm assuming we do not need any more discussion, so we'll call the roll, please. <coughs> Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandler. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ealing. Yes. The next item, uh, officials salary adjustments. Mm -hmm. This amendment is needed to adjust the elected county official salary to comply with the minimum compensation due as required by the uh, Tennessee Code. This amendment provides retroactive payback to April 1, 2010, which is the date of the census. So this amendment will finish us out for the rest of the year, and as I said, it will go back to April 1st of 2010. So we'll have to correct those salaries from April 10th. It goes back to April 1st of 2010. Yes, because Elaine was very smart and pulled up the uh, the census information when you completed the census forms. It said, as of April 1, 2010, how many were in your house? So that's the effective date. I thought it went to April 1st, 2011. And that's when you're getting your information, but but it was effective back to April 1, 2010. Well, they actually ask you retroactively when it came out last summer, yeah, like you said. How many were in your house X number of days ago? Right. You're going to get a nice little Christmas present. Hmm. Nothing of a choice on. Motion to approve. 
Commissioner Jordan, thank you. Gentlemen, we need a sec. sec thank you, Commissioner Jordan. Uh, Commissioner Shea. Now, this. Um, can I Circuit. Here's the court clerk. Circuit court is um, excess. Gotcha. Gotcha. As his trustee. The $64,459 yes. includes the highway superintendent. No. You'll get another amendment for that later. later. Now, these are the, uh, the mayor brought up a good point. These are the amendments for the, um, all the offices that, whose budget is, um, their salaries are in our budget. The circuit court clerk is not in here, neither is the trustee, because they pay excess. They pay the excess fee, so you won't see that. But this does include the uh, officials. They that get were the salary, but it's in, they'll get the salary. April it's just 2010 not to June 30th or August, so August 31st. Yes, the prior yeah, ones. That includes them. that. There's, there's includes six that listed right here: County Mayor, yeah. Rector, Deed, Property Assessor, County Court, Transfer Court, and Sheriff. That's all. This. That's in the budget, but yeah. you don't have to. We don't have to amend a budget for the trusts. The know, or that, the that's still money or some of these back Yes, here. they'll be going out. It'll just be yeah. less so fees coming mm -hmm. back to us. What is the total amount? Of you knew you were going to get asked. I should have known. <laughs> I, yeah, could. I, I could. I didn't the second total page. Amount. The second page then has all the um, all the officials that it hit. And I don't know if I didn't put a total on that. If I had the 15 months column up and go the whole way down. That's 20. Well then I, I would get it. No, no, that, tw that is, that was my calculations on what would be needed in election. There's sufficient funds in the election budget to pay the administrator the increase. That's all that work is below. Well, if I wanted to know for this first year because of the election, how much it was going to cost, then I could go from, from April 2010 to July, June 30th this year, if I added up all that 15-month column, that would be the total amount extra that we're going to pay those positions. Yes, okay. for the 15 months. That's okay. that's for the that's for all this year plus three months out of last year. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. it means that people that didn't even uh, had never done the job got a raise when they started. Right. Is that the way it is? Well, true. well actually, we're sending, we're sending money to the Yeah, I did. We're, 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 sending, we're paying the out. ones that left from April 1 till August. Yeah, they get three and months. And, and see, I would, not I would counter that with the way this is. You've seen that CTAS manual where it lists the bands of population. That's what you pay. So mm -hmm. we have underpaid. I would, I would believe that we hit these increased population bands long before we're recognizing it as of April. Well, I would counter it if you look at what the General Assembly has done this year, that teachers, just because they're in the same amount of years, they shouldn't get paid the, the same amount as someone else. But these people, if they for the first day on the job, was getting paid the same amount as somebody that was in here before. Kind of different viewpoint. <laughs> This is the minimum. We, uh, that's what I'm this saying. is the minimum. It's the minimum. Across the state, other mm -hmm. counties, the most take places pay the minimum, or um, some places go above and beyond and pay more. The only one I could definitively say is Williamson County pays above the minimum that they were already, once this came out, they were already above that. So it didn't affect them. It didn't affect them at all. They were already paying above the new mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Journey. I don't see it is falling comes clear to me these people that were elected they was qualified they just qualified the person that was in there he was just in there longer they met the qualifications to get in there so that's the law the law on the property assessor on the pay doesn't have anything to do with years of service no, well, years none of them do. None of them. It's, it's just a job for this much population, population right. for this much money. Yes. The girl has been there 30 years that office, two days. This population. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This office that serves this population. This won't happen in Rutherford County, but let me make one observation. Let's suppose a 
population stays at two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. Two hundred and sixty two thousand population. There won't be an increase in any of these until two until that population goes past two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Two hundred seventy five thousand people. That's yeah. people. Sir? Don't they people. get people you, you people not dollars. You're thinking dollars. It has to go to two hundred and seventy five thousand. Yeah, but they get periodic people. raises just like anybody else if the state approves, don't they? Only if the state gets a raise. Mm -hmm. The tables have not changed since 2007, 7, 8? 7, 8. Well, 8, 9, we're paying the same. Because the state employees have not received raises. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, what is paid for the office where that band of population has not changed. We're back to arguing about something we have absolutely no control over again. You're right. But we get to pay it. That's what is right. <laughs> Until the law changes, we have to pay it. Yeah. Just like the mental evaluations and the autopsies and half the stuff we've done tonight. I don't know why, why we didn't vote on that stuff. So much that we don't have an option to vote no on. I mean, half the agenda tonight, we don't have the authority to say no. Exactly right. It's ridiculous. You're right. You're right. You don't agree with it, I just don't be representative. Yeah. So but as far as right here tonight, we don't have any choice. You can say no. You still got to do it, but you can yeah. say no. Yeah. But what would happen if the Board of Commissioners voted no on this? What we would, would this still no do? We would still have to pay it. You still have to. There would be a judge somewhere coming in. <laughs> it would be an audit finding if we, did. if we didn't. Penalties and everything. Gentlemen, we do have a motion and a second for the discussion. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Pass. Commissioner Schaefer? Abstain. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Uh, the Sheriff's Department and Jail? Sheriff Arnold? And Mr. Russell? Uh, if you will uh, walk us through, you have seven uh, budget amendments, and we can take this as one vote unless um, a member of the committee uh, stops you in, during your presentation. Well, we do have one extra. Did you get the, the other one the, uh, about the uh, rent? Yeah. No. Yes, that, that's, that's number seven. <laughs> I'm, I'm counting, I'm counting that as number seven. Let me double check and make sure that I did. Yes, yes, I'm counting that as number seven. Okay. First one tonight. Uh, first one tonight is uh, we need to pull some funds out of our data processing services and the gasoline account, dump into our uh, 307 communications account, which of course is for all of our cell phones and uh, telephone telecommunication and all the uh, communication there at the, at the sheriff's office. Originally, I think the first amendment I did when I came here back in September was uh, to pull 15,000 out of that account because it was originally 130,000. And I don't know why that, that amendment was filed before I came on board. So anyway, now we're putting some money back because those funds have, have run out. So we're going to need to put some funds back in there. So we've requested uh, money out of there. And of course, we're doing well on gasoline right now, so we're going to pull some money out of there. Uh, so we're asking 45000 back into that account. That should take care of it for the, for the budget year. Uh, there was $150 that came in on uh, recycled material. So we're going to put that back into our repair and maintenance of our building on the uh, jail side. There was a uh, SWAT school registration that we got money in from uh, the city of Laverne, Laverne, $500, and we're going to put that back into our training account. The uh, government contributions was the Murfreesboro Housing Authority had a uh, anti-drug coalition thing that they did, and so we had some officers over there, so they paid some overtime for that. So originally, the one we filed at uh, Public Safety was just that general line item. That has now been broken down into money going back into the overtime, and then the second page was the related benefit accounts that are with it on Social Security, retirement, and Medicare. Thank you for those. Uh, the next one was a request, uh, number five, where we had the uh, lightning strike on the voter. Uh, the, uh, is that a voter or a repeater or something like that for our towers? Yes. Okay. Um, we have paid for this already out of our uh, repair and maintenance of equipment on the uh, sheriff's side. Uh, we were just asking to have those funds reimbursed uh, from the undesignated account. 
and then we're going to pull additionally fifteen thousand dollars out of our gasoline account as well and put that into uh, extraditions for prisoner transport and then the last item is uh, repair and maintenance of the building account again we're going to pull money from that account to uh, pay for a short-term rental where we got several truckloads of free supplies, supplies from the hospital, the old hospital that got donated. And uh, we needed a place to uh, transition those on bring them in, clean them up, get them ready to use at the sheriff's office. So uh, we're using those for the next couple months. We're over there, any repair or maintenance. And mainly it's just a lot of stuff just needs to be cleaned up and it's very useful and a great donation. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. a lot of stuff it's amazing how much stuff that they had over there so. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the amendments we have for tonight one question commissioner the uh, sure. communication you said on the cell phones 45,000 yes, why sir. is it so far out why um uh, i might been uh, just part of that um, where are the question blackberries pay from? Is the black or blackberries data processing or are blackberries communications? And so that's where part of that where should have been accounted for. We've been paying so we had asked, out of the communication line, right? Well, it, I think it was it's communications. Been, it's been it was communications, and then for a while it flipped to right. data processing. We told them, you know. Oh, okay. better to be consistent in what we've done in prior years and pay it out of communication. <coughs> so that's part of that flip-flop of money. But We're going to sure. consolidate all of our telecommunications into one line item. So cell phones, pagers, uh, you know, our, our phone air systems, cards, air cards, air anything that is a telecommunication at all is going to go into one line item, which will now be the... Uh, the uh, but that was that, that first amendment that you came in right. with 15000 right. to take out of communications yeah. and put it in data processing yeah. was to pay for the kind of blackberries, the blackberries, which, yeah. why are we doing that? Well, that because was it was lightning. At the time, yeah. Regina had been well, talking about that. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many blackberries. You know, before we came here, there was, let's like say, 50 or 60 blackberry bought them to change out phones for the old phones were uh, outdated and stuff. So then, that was one big thing that she had done, and then when we came on, actually we had to pay that, for it. That amendment was already. Yeah, that uh, that amendment was, was already in the in the works. So it would have been just a thirty thousand dollar yes sir. difference then, because of still it's y'all looking at that and trying to get a hold on that. Well, that's one thing too. We came in and we were using Sprint and Verizon and different bills, different prices. And we pretty much consolidated under one Verizon and uh, got our bills down just a little bit. You know, we were able to save a little bit of money there by going to one user. Because SROs and narcotics and detectives were all on Sprint and admin, and other people were on Verizon. And naturally, no one could, we couldn't all talk to each other. Now we can all talk to each other. It should bring it down a lot. On uh, number five, on. Is that still coming out of undesignated funds? Is that what you're requesting? Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. It has already been paid, though, out of, out of the uh, 54-110-336, which is our repair maintenance equipment out of our sheriff's office budget. I mean, it's already been paid for. We're just asking to be reimbursed. But it's just I understand. If you want to pull that one out, I'm going to have to vote no on that particular one for that funding, or we can put it together and I don't know on all of them, but... Do you want to make a motion to pull number five out and vote on that separately, Commissioner P? Please. Okay, we have a motion to pull number five out and uh, make that a separate uh, vote. Is there a second? Und it's coming out of undesignated fund balance. It's already paid, you know. Uh, I look like we could find that in our in our budget somewhere instead of pulling out undesignated fund balance, especially since it's already been paid for. Uh, gentlemen, we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Uh, okay. All in favor uh, of pulling a number five out and, and voting on that separately, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay. 
So, gentlemen, uh, we will um, announce. We I was under the impression somebody could just made a motion to approve one through seven without number five, but I mean, but five. No, no, he was asking to put. I did do that correctly. I mean, we already could have made the motion to look at number five separately. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm adding an extra step, didn't I? Well, I'll make a motion to approve the others, okay. excluding five. All right. Second. So all of the other amendments excluding number five. And we have a second from Commissioner Sandlin. Call the roll, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. And I, I, I did complicate yeah. this a bit, well, didn't I? I, I didn't. I could have. <laughs> uh, as far as repair and maintenance equipment, that line item, do you, you got money in that line item. I mean, if you run out, you can always come back, hit un right. undesignated funds later. I agree, agree with Commissioner P. We don't have to hit that fund right now if we don't have to. Get a little farther into the year, if you can't find it, I feel like you could probably get some help up here at that point in time. One of the proposals was that, that we presented at Public Safety, which yeah. some of the members are here are on that on the board. When we get down to the end of uh, April, uh, the Crown Victoria is no longer being built. So we're going to try and round up all the money we can. And I'm going to go out that I've got left over in our budget. And we're going to go buy as many of those vehicles as we can. And for our proposed line item for vehicles next year, there's still going to be another half million dollars in there as well to then buy as many more Crown Vicks as I can get my hands on. The 2012-13 budget will not have any Crown Vicks in it mm -hmm. because we're going to let their, they're coming out with Caprice Classic, which is another full-size vehicle. But the, the game plan is that we're going to let them build that for a year. That way we don't have any recall problems. Ford's coming out with the Interceptor or something yeah, like that. Yeah, front-wheel yeah. drive vehicle. It's front-wheel yeah. drive vehicle. It's not going to work. Yeah. So it's the four-wheel drive vehicle. Well, they have front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. All drive. Yeah. But yeah. It, the, the vehicle, whenever they go to it, all the uh, stuff that is on our current Crown Vicks will useless. not. Yeah, it's all useless. Yeah. So we're getting more bang for our buck by trying to round up and mm -hmm. do something this year. So we can switch some stuff out and not have to buy it. So I'm trying to make best use of our funds by buying hard assets. That you know, that's what mm -hmm. we want to do, and uh, kind of get ahead of the curve, especially since they're not going to be available for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we'll let them come out with Caprice for a couple of years, kind of work the bugs out. Then we'll start buying those. So when you get to the 2012-13 budget year, you will see a very limited amount of vehicles in there. We probably won't be buying any patrol cars that year. Because the first year of vehicles naturally recalls, yeah. and yeah. third shift <laughs> officers have to wake up and get paid overtime to go have their cars worked on. Yeah. We don't like overtime. So that was my proposal. So mm -hmm. that's coming up. Still want to see me vote. Yes, sir. I, I, agree agree yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Gentlemen, we need to deal with the $13,000 from unassigned. A motion, please. I'm going to get by with that. I make a motion we defer that motion, that, that number five. Second. Let them come back to the process of that. Okay, and seconded by Commissioner P. Question, Commissioner uh, if another department got hit by lightning and lost some equipment, would that would they try to pay for it out of their own budget or would they go to undesignated fund balance? Mm -hmm. If there was really, something, 15000 or something. I mean, it really depends on, on the budget. I mean, if it was my budget, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 is, there a, is there any standard operating procedure on this is what I'm asking. If you had it in your budget, you'd pay for it out of yours. If you couldn't, you'd come back like and ask for it. Mr. Farley looked for those. Where it works? Yeah. Be able to repair in his budget first. That's right. He didn't want to get it out of a designated fund balance. I said, no, if you found $5,000 more. That's first priority. Gentlemen, uh, do you understand the motion? We're going to ask him to defer it. Okay, call the, call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Uh, gentlemen, you do not have any uh, documentation in your notebook uh, for the next item. Uh, <laughs> A recommendation for funding for the design of jail, is, jail expansion and renovation. And I apologize for any confusion uh, on uh, our agenda. Uh, I know uh, on the front page of our agenda it did actually say design, but then in the explanation the word design was not there. Uh, but I will give you some history. 
from the property management uh, committee, uh, February um, February the 24th, Commissioner Farley moved, seconded by Commissioner Cook, to look at funding the design of the jail expansion and renovation, and that passed unanimously. Uh, the most recent public safety um, committee also has sent us a motion, and that was what was perhaps a little bit um, ambiguous because the word design was not in their uh, motion. But if you will look at the public safety minutes and go to three paragraphs up, Sheriff Arnold did advise that the property management committee approved looking at funding the design phase of the jail expansion and renovation. And this matter went to the budget committee and then the budget committee sent it back to public safety uh, before coming back here. And that's how we're ending back here, Sheriff Arnold. Uh, the other thing, excuse me, the other thing that was a little bit that we did need some clarification and the, and the mayor can give us some guidance on this. Uh, there was not a number attached to the motion from public safety uh, and, the, and the, the, the sheriff can give us some um, guidance there. Well, the estimate on the design fees that we have received from Mr. Klein was $440,000. So that's, that's how many dollars we're talking about that would be needed for the uh, design of the project. You said four, four, 440. 440. What is the funding mechanism that would be proposed? For the $440,000? Yeah. The funding mechanism that's proposed for the 440000 this has nothing to do with building the building now. We do have enough dollars in the actual um, litigation, litigation tax. tax fund that's available for, you know, for that purpose. And you should have that in your notebook. Oh, okay, he has that. But future litigation tax funds are committed elsewhere, so this isn't the current. This is not the current. This is your <coughs> in, um, allocated to the debt service fund to pay the debt on the work house. These funds that we have are restricted that can only be used for, uh, for the jail workhouse Courthouses. So it is an appropriate use of the funds. Most everyone I've talked to in all these different committees, so I don't know what other questions you may have. I've, I've explained to, to all the other committees. If someone has a specific question or have, if I've not talked to, please let me know and I'll start with my spill. What's the expansion for? It is for the start. administration area. All right, currently at the jail, we have pushed out every wall. We have uh, pushed out over the porches uh, for every area. We are now renting space for roughly 25, 30 officers. Uh, we are just at plumb out of space. And we've rem and remodeled the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen was originally designed back for the old jail. Uh, and then, of course, they had the expansion of the tower, uh, and it was designed to say, say roughly to feed 200 uh, inmates out of. Now we're feeding roughly 700 inmates out of that one kitchen. Uh, laundry, too. Uh, it was designed. Well, actually, it was designed for the. It was designed to do laundry for 500 inmates, and we're doing roughly 700 inmates worth of laundry a day. Uh, also, you'll see in here we have the communications uh, dispatch. If we do the consolidation, uh, they can all be in one room. Uh, got 16, I believe, stations within this area. Uh, there'll be enough space for the detective division. We also the vault for those that have been over to tour the jail and have been into the evidence vault. And you've seen how uh, Philip has everything arranged. He it's his madness in there, but he knows where it's all at. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 he's out of space. I mean, he rents at different times. You know, he'll rent storage space secretly throughout the county to hide evidence in. Because, you know, we naturally can't let everybody know where we're putting 700 pounds of marijuana or something like that. <laughs> you know. But, uh, it's yeah. So, you know, rental place from Star America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we put it there. We seal it or we know we've got alarms and stuff on it. So, but, uh, you know, 
who knows what we might rent space for for the evidence room because we're just out of space. I believe that this space study uh, that was originally designed back in uh, 2002 to look at this, and it's gone on every every year since. I believe, uh, from what I've been told, with the uh, the different buildings that are going to be built or looked at to be built, we are the next in line uh, out of the county buildings, besides the courthouse itself. And uh, we're just asking for your, to do this space because we need it. There's a judicial building somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where, yeah. but it's somewhere. Well, the safety y'all passed yesterday and make put a giant. No, we did not. All we did was make a recommendation to send it to budget here to find what the funding mechanism was going to be to pay for the design. What is? What have you come what up with? The, the litigation, the tax. litigation tax. Is what well, you just said. I make a motion then. We use what the budget director is recommending for the design of it. Then. Your motion is for design, uh, design and using the litigation tax. Yes, four hundred and forty thousand. We have a motion. Can I ask a question? We have a motion to fund the design phase uh, and using the litigation tax. Four hundred forty thousand dollars is the motion. You need a second, don't you? I need a second. Uh, Last call for a second. That motion dies for lack of a second. Well, I was just, I believe, I mean, I apologize, but is there sufficient funds in litigation? You've got a, you've got a, a sheet. A sheet. Turn oh, another yeah. sheet now. Right here. Right here. Because I know we had the same type of discussion about the high school some months back, designing it. And we went ahead and designed it, and knowing that we could hold those plans for some number of years, you know, if uh, if funding wasn't available, and and that's why I was going to ask if that money was available. We can't use this litigation money for anything else besides this jail type of thing. <laughs> yeah, jail or workhouse, you know, and uh, and stuff. So. So we started the year. Or courthouse. Or courthouse. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, two point three things. Mm -hmm. 2.1 million we have uh, allocated out of that 85,000 for video recorders 275,000 for improvements which was cameras right? mm -hmm. and then there is another amendment later for 50,000 for mediation um, I do want to put that in there that brought our balance down to 1.7 million this 400 use of the 440 will bring the balance down to one million two hundred seventy-four thousand. Fifty thousand was for what? Now? Well, it's coming later. It's we fifty thousand for remediation for of the jail. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. yeah. And quite frankly, that fifty thousand is just a beginning point. It, it's substantially likely to be a good bit more than that. We don't know yet. That's the one. If you remember at the very beginning, where I said we're short nine hundred and something dollars in our right. cash balances, that we needed to put some money over there in our capital projects. Or the remediation, Commissioner Baum. We've uh, recommended funding for the designs of, of at least two big capital pro projects this year. One was Stewart's Creek High School, and one was the first phase of the Eagle Bowl uh, renovations. But in, in each case, we were pretty sure that the projects were going to ultimately happen, ultimately occur. And I just bring that question up right now, but because I've I've heard statements from the sheriff that if the the workhouse and the sheriff's office were to be combined. We may not want to talk about that right now, that particular issue. But I'll if they, but if they were, would would this capital project be necessary, or would, would it be necessary in its entirety? It some of it would. I mean, they, you could probably scale back a little bit, but uh, some of it would. I mean, there's plenty of there's a, a lot of office space over there that's not being used right now. That being said. Uh, some of this stuff would still have to be. We'd have to redesign right. this building. I, I guess for I can, communications and for other areas. I guess I kind of bring it up to, to suggest two things. Number one, if um, if the project in its current form isn't isn't something we feel like is necessarily in, 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 inevitable, then if we were to design it and then not build it, that would be a, a loss of funds as opposed to designing Stewart's Creek. Mm -hmm. We're pretty sure we were going to ultimately build it, so those funds 
report going to be wasted. Um, I know that the Public Safety Committee is going to be debating the pros and cons of this merger at their April 18th meeting. And again, you may not want to keep begin discussing that <coughs> right here, but we don't know for sure what's going to come out of that meeting. And if they did recommend some kind of merger, it might affect a particular project that, that capital project that needs to be built here. And then the second point I wanted to make is you suggested that there is some office space at the workhouse. Is there any chance that we could use that office, that you could use that office space, even if there weren't a formal merger? That would be up to y'all and the mayor. It just seems like that makes the funding of this particular design different than the other two because... You all decide who uses what office space. You all are over all the buildings. That's up to y'all. Well, I think you made some very good points. And that's one reason why I didn't second the motion, just because we've got to get a good grasp around the whole idea, and there's still another idea out there. And like you said, if these two merge, then there's a different ball game. There's a, diff there's a different play here that we probably will do or not do or what. So I think this right here is just a little premature at this point until after what comes out of public safety and comes to us then as far as a recommendation of what we, they think you need to do and y'all think you need to do and then what we do and then goes back to into a full commission on what, you know, the majority wants to do there. Um, I'll just leave it at that at this, at this point. Sure. Mr. Uh, Jernigan. I don't want to use your words against you because I, I was under the impression you were making a good, a good faith estimate to try and consolidate and perhaps save some money. There's more debate that needs right, to occur on that. Yeah, right, right. But on the off chance that the Public Safety Committee wants to... What was presented in the paper was not truly all the facts, naturally. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> naturally, there is quite a bit of office space and open space over there that could be used. Uh, to say that all of this could, uh, could ultimately it won't. We'll have to still, you know, it would offset it now. Right now, we're busting at the seams. You know, we're paying for rental space places. Um, so that could be a, a way to offset some stuff. Yes. But naturally, you know, if we want to do the combined dispatch and put it all into one room, you're looking at, you know, gutting our communication area right now. Um, in this proposal, we've got to double the size of the kitchen. There's debate on that. Uh, you know, there, there's several more debates. I understand that. Even if, hypothetically, there is office space available at the workhouse that could be used, that might offset some of this eight or nine million dollar estimate. Potentially. But there still might need to be some expansion to the jail. Yes. Well, there's no expansion to the jail in here. It's right uh, the, the, the kitchen. Of actually, the support areas. Yeah, and kitchen and laundry room. And new cells. We're not building any new cells. Right. <coughs> We're redesigning what we have downstairs. And Commissioner Jernigan. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit confused from the, when this got on the agenda here. My understanding of reading public so I thought public safety brought this forward with if they could use a litigation tax to consider the design of this. Now, we've got two members on here. I'd like to hear from them. If it didn't, why we even got it on here? Well, when I think Commissioner Baum did an excellent job of summing up my thoughts, and that's why I didn't second your motion. I, I wish we'd had a chance to, you know, maybe kick us around a little bit. But uh, when this came to public safety, of course, it came here first, and we sent it back to public safety so we could all see it. And, you know, if there's needs there, we want to support them. Uh, and I told the sheriff in public safety the other night, you know, right now I've got some priorities in, in their education. And I'm not going to spend $8 million on jail if it's going to take a tax increase. And he told me at that time that the litigation tax could pay for this. Well, I took it naively that the litigation tax would be able to cover the uh, architectural drawings here and the estimates and and pay for this building. 
And of course, that's we're seeing now that that's not so. Well, you thought it covered the bill, did not? Right. You know, I, I knew that you know the litigation tax is ongoing. I didn't know you know what we had committed against it or whatever. So you know, my hopes were that. Hey, and the reason I said, yeah, we'll send it forward is litigation tax is going to pay for it, and we're not going to have to have <coughs> property tax increase. And I don't mind going ahead and looking at this now. You know, if, if I knew litigation tax would pay for it, we do see the needs of expansion there. I'd say, hey, we've got the money. It's already allocated. It's not going to take a tax increase to do it. Yes, let's do it. But that doesn't seem to be the case right now, and I'm not ready to commit for $8 million <coughs> expansion. On the, on the jail right now. And I'm kind of like Commissioner Baum, you know, if we don't know exactly what we're going to do, I don't want to pay $440,000 for a study that we may not build. You know, I want to see exactly what we are going to build. And I know this came out of public works. I mean, they may have more input than, than we do, our property management, I'm sorry. Uh, but didn't but pu didn't, it, didn't uh, public work send it on forward the other night? Yes, we do have a motion. We do have a motion from uh, public safety. I mean public safety. Mm -hmm. That's what I was reading my notes. That's mm -hmm. what I was going to. Mm -hmm. But like I said, that if to me was with, with, with the understanding safety, yeah. it'd be paid for out of entirely paid for out of litigation yeah. tax. So. Well, there's two two members here in public safety. If they ain't willing to step up and move forward, uh, I don't think the rest Could. of us. Is, we had no idea what monies were available when this was presented at public, public safety. She wasn't there. But she's told you now. Yeah, now. And that's what we we're, were looking at, and it says right here, to, to look at the funding mechanism <coughs> for the jail expansion slash renovation is the way it was put at the end. So we didn't find out anything about the monies before you did. We heard the same thing tonight. I don't think we're going to get no word tonight. So, uh, I move we send it back to public safety then, or, or uh, whichever property manager, whoever's supposed to be, and let them get it straightened out before we send it back up here to budget. But there are some questions got to be answered before we move too far forward. It's a major investment. Okay, uh, Commissioner Jernigan, you have uh, made a motion to send it back to public safety, seconded by Commissioner Sandlin. Yes. Now, uh, specifically, what do you want them to do? Well, I want either public safety or if it could include property management, unless we're going to proceed with getting this design, don't send it back up here to budget. If you don't, let's be serious about we're going to design it. We didn't, we sit here wasting our time. Well, I don't think we wasted our time. I think we found out where we have some money so and how much we have. Well, I don't we didn't know that before. I don't want to be either we public safety or property management. Move forward with uh, are you saying you would you would even ask that public safety work with property property yes. management committee also and just decide uh, what is the course of action here? I would love for it to be. Okay. All right, that is the motion and second, gentlemen, discussion. We, we've got a meeting, I think, scheduled on the 18th. Whether you uh, have a special meeting to talk about the uh, pros and cons of uh, consolidating, is that correct? Right, which I think will be related to this. So, you know, I think maybe maybe some of it will come out in that discussion if we decide to have that discussion. So, I mean, I don't mind it coming back to public safety and us looking at whether we can. That's April when? 18th. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, would your motion even include uh, having this uh, as part of that agenda? Could we do that with, with that? Uh, well, that's, that'd be up to your public safety. Uh, we could ask uh, ask the chairman, chairman too, to, so. to add that to the agenda. I mean, I don't have a problem looking at it then. We need to look at it. So, I mean, that's as good a time as any. We but. can request that the, that the chairman add this to the agenda for that meeting. I think it's going to be a full meeting, but yeah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We'd be better off looking at it at the regular meeting. I must need to have you public right management, right. property That's management there again meeting. that night too. Mm -hmm. uh, gentlemen, any further discussion relative to this motion? <clears throat> I guess we could just do a voice vote. Can All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Aye. You are going back through the committee process. 
<laughs> okay, let's turn in our notebooks, please. Um, we do have uh, another um, amendment, uh, uh, sort of a, uh, to your, uh, yeah. You have something else? Yes, uh, we'll talk to Commissioner Farley about this. I apologize. All, right. all my stuff around it up today. If you will look at the next budget amendment uh, to provide additional funding for costs associated with the remediation of the adult <coughs> detention center's exterior, which is the brickwork, and that was what our finance director was alluding to a while ago on the page about our uh, litigation tax, the $50,000. Do you need to add anything more to that, Sheriff Arnold? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner P, seconded by Commissioner Sandlin. Do we have enough information? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. And you said you had something else? I want to actually got uh, two more. Yeah, actually, two more things. I gave you a copy of the first thing. Uh, Bart Smith, I asked him the other day to kind of put together, since he's come over to the sheriff's office, just a financial to give y'all about kind of the increases since he's come over. This is what he presented to us, and it's what I gave you, the, the increases in the, the will tax uh, since he come over. I, I guess he's... Uh, nice part is going up from last year. Yeah, it's going, going up like? quite a bit. <laughs> People are, people are I don't think we should give him, give him full credit for this. It's just to give our <laughs> consumers credit the for consumers buying more cars. Yeah. <laughs> right. The economy is moving forward. Good. So I just wanted to present y'all with this. This is what Bart would have normally presented to y'all. Thank you much. Second thing I got, and I've gone from the mayor's office to the cupola looking for a copy machine to give each and every one of y'all a copy. Mm -hmm. Every door in the building blocked, and I couldn't get, get one. Uh, I'll be glad to get you one here just a little bit. But uh, I talked to Commissioner Farley. This was something we wanted to present the other night at Public Safety. Actually, everything drew, uh, draw, got drawn out, and it, was, it got left off. It's a, it's a grant uh, from the Governor's Highway Safety Program. This is a grant uh, to fund 16 laptops, 16 uh, AC adapters, 10 striker dual radars, and uh, overtime for doing uh, helping out with the governor's highway safety program basically years ago they started this program uh, we didn't do it in the past but now we are starting to get on board with it do the equipment and stuff we can get first year they will pay a hundred percent of all the overtime that occurs by doing the DUI checkpoints and different other things that we do uh, second year they will pay 75 percent of all the overtime that has occurred by helping out and doing these things. Third year, it's 50%. So, uh, needed to present it to y'all, and I wish I had a copy to give to each and every one of y'all right now, but I will give so you So what's one. the match on the computers and all that? Is it? There's no match. There is no match. It's, it's a grant. It's, it's a grant. How much is the total grant? The total grant is $99,949.24. So the match to is not the first year, but it comes into the second. It comes into the yeah. second. And but this it's is only on overtime. It's only on overtime, and this is stuff that we're going to be doing anyway. Uh, we're going to be helping out with the DUI checkpoints and stuff. And so naturally, if we can get them to pay, you know, even on the second year to pay 75% of that. Asking to apply. Yeah, you can to you're apply. asking yeah, to apply. Yeah, we're asking to apply. I believe that. I don't hear a downside to it. I mean, if there's no no new employees, it's sorry. Over time, it's probably going to get accrued anyway, so yeah. uh, accrued anyway. So, do you work in conjunction with the cities on this? When yes, the cities. Uh, we did one on uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, Murfreesboro, Smyrna, Laverne, and Eagleville, and us, THP, and ABC, all went out and did bar checks throughout the entire county. Uh, and then did uh, three DUI checkpoints, I believe. And during that time, they arrested uh, numerous underage drinkers at the bars and then had uh, quite a few DUIs at the checkpoints. So, you know, naturally it's getting drunk drivers off the streets. So really our only input financially is just the, the overtime part is 25% and then 50% and then... Years two and three down the road. Yeah, years two and three basically even at year and three you're only apply, half so make a motion yep. that they can apply commissioner salmon thank you second seconded by commissioner p 
equipment, you said it was worth 99000 Yeah. Does that include, how does that include the overtime? The, I mean, the, uh, I think 50, is there a limit 000. on it or something for overtime? I would, yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. I would say, I'd have to go back and read everything mm -hmm. again. That's uh, $4,000 for the overtime. For a year. And the rest says a laptop. Is there $99,000 yeah. just for the first year? Is that for the total of three years? I believe that's for the total of three, three years. Because the uh, laptops and the radar devices are roughly fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, so we're we're getting fifty thousand dollars worth of equipment that naturally, whenever we're it came to, to re that. outfitting vehicles, we'd be asking to. Okay. For and that we're getting to keep that even after yeah, the ransom. Yeah, we keep that. Yep. You of course, have a lot of expectancy of yeah. the technology isn't exactly. forever. Well, that's part of getting us to the twenty first century. Mm -hmm. How long are you obligated to do these checkpoints for the four-year period? For the three-year period. Three year. And we've already been doing, we've done three of them with them now. This is just getting uh, the equipment, basically, because we're already doing the tech checkpoints with them. Okay. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Gentlemen, Thank anything you else? Thank, Thank you. you. I just want to hand these out. This is this for y'all to look at. We're going to start seeing these. I need to hand this out when I first started. Uh, these are graphs. We're starting to do at the sheriff's office, and we're going to be presenting to every committee we come to about our overtimes and comp times. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, that was <laughs> so just to give you that, you'll start seeing that. You can see what we're paying out, you know, in comp time and or overtime on the S on the sheriff's office side and on detention, and even on one side we've got it broke down to even departments. So just wanted to give you that and for y'all to study. Thank y'all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you much. Okay, gentlemen, continuing, uh, we have, um, uh, excuse me, domestic violence. Domestic yeah. violence. Uh, we have um, a budget amendment from domestic violence. Mrs. Nola. Yes, this is a request to move $500 from salaries and $671 from capital equipment to travel, $671, and printing, $500. <coughs> Another budget. So moved. Second. Commissioner Salmon, seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Our next uh, amendment is uh, for audit services. Mrs. Nolan. Um, the cost of our audit is 30 cents times the population. So with the census, we have a new population, and our, I'd estimated, I knew that we would have an increase, but I didn't quite get it. So I need $4,000 for our audit services to come from the building of contents. So moved. Commissioner Sandlin, second by Commissioner Sandlin. Sure. <laughs> Let's pay the bill, right? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. That's what we've been yes. doing tonight. <coughs> Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. From the ambulance service, uh, we have four amendments. Uh, the first um, <coughs> amendment is to uh, the requesting $7,000 increase in patient charges to uh, refunds to be able to pay overpayments from insurance companies and <coughs> patients. They're requesting to transfer funds from the communications into the postal charges account to $5,000, and then $60,000 from the paraprofessional payroll to, to their part-time payroll. This is when they're part-time or paying for people who may not have been there, left, or whatever. They get turnover. Turnover, thank you. 
The next one is uh, a request to use 95000 out of their assigned fund balance, 80000 for gasoline, and 15000 <coughs> for utilities to get them through the rest of the year. So moved by Chairman. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Sandlin. Seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Uh, we have uh, a budget amendment from the highway fund, and you will uh, remember that uh, our finance director reminded us that we would be doing this for the um, highway commissioner. Uh, Superintendent. The superintendent, yes. And this is, as you said, to, uh, to increase the salary for the road superintendent and the related benefits. They will be taking their funds from their 68,714 uh, highway equipment line. So much. Commissioner Salmon, thank you. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner P. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jarnigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Stay. Commissioner Eagle. Yes. Mrs. Garrett. Bless your heart. <laughs> um, she is here uh, for us to approve an agreement with the Tennessee Department of Health, and this is our annual contract. It is. It's a few months late. This is actually the, the year we're already into. Um, and it has gone to Health and Education. They passed it to you, and I'd like for it to go to commission and get approved. Did you draw a short straw tonight? I, I think so. I must have made someone mad. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to be. Yes. See what Ted Beatty does. He's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> These amounts that are in there are already in our budget. And they're what our budget reflects for the current year. Second. I hate to be so quick. You don't want to argue about it. Or we can, we can. Uh, yeah, explain the last two pages. Call yeah. <laughs> the road, please. Your signature page. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you. Mr. Sandvig. And Mr. Sandvig, you're only bringing us one motion tonight. Absolutely. Uh, it's getting to be that time. Yeah. Gentlemen, section six in your notebooks. And your recommended right. motion? Uh, we are asking to amend an additional $11,551 in state early childhood education grants revenues. Account 46515 to increase the related medical insurance budget, account 73400-207. Some additional money we're getting for our grant for the governor's preschools. And to amend the capital outlay function as presented in order to transfer $61,160 to the building program fund for funding the $75,600 Excel Energy Change Order. And after talking to Lisa, I thought it would be better to move it all into the building program and have Keep that little in the piece in the budget. GP budget. So that when somebody says, how much did that project cost? Right. Mm -hmm. Just go to one place. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Stanley. Seconded by Commissioner Jerry. Discussion? Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Sandlin. Thank you. Are you leaving the That's why I am leaving. Gentlemen, section eight in your notebooks. 
a resolution to request unclaimed balance of accounts remitted to the state treasurer under unclaimed property act uh, we did this last year uh, and that uh, involved collecting over a number of years uh, it is recommended that we do it every year uh, so this resolution will reflect us uh, remitting to the state treasurer under unclaimed property act and I will not read the entire resolution if that's okay with you do we do is there any any details that we might need to know without it's me just that this is every year that we have not just us but all the offices that they have unclaimed property which primarily are checks that people do not deposit and that's a lot of it. That's what I was yeah so that I mean if I wrote to a check and you just get down and there's a South standing check then I can't keep it I have to turn it over to the state as unclaimed property after the state will hold it for 18 months waiting for people to request it if not if we request from the state we're asking for that to come back to the county then we are we the county are responsible then if that individual comes sure and claims you it. you got to give it back mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a reason why we don't just make it standard policy to once a year to request this? Oh, that's what we're, that's doing. What we're doing. I mean, but we're, I mean, do we even have to, <coughs> do we just give you the authority to do this yearly? Coming <coughs> I think it has to be a resolution. It has to be a resolution every time. Motion to approve. Second. And that second is by Commissioner P. How, how long? I mean, 10 years, five years? No, we do. Well, do the last we have time to keep it before they can go claim it? Because don't the, the standard checks at this county issues the payroll checks are 180 days aren't they yeah, but still it's not our money if I, if I am paying you for jury duty uh -huh. it's not the county's money it's that individual's money so the county can't keep it uh, can we, we have, get into we litigation to, on this no I mean we turn yeah. it over to the and state yeah to yeah people. I mean there but, is a process that that the folks in all the offices go through through to try to say do you realize you have a check outstanding but if there's x number of dollars out there five years old then we might as well have it back in our car uh -huh. and that's what this instead is doing instead of the state having instead it the state just holding. sitting down there and they're fun not, we looked up before the meeting uh, yes last year we did collect two hundred and nine thousand nine hundred thirty three dollars but now that was over a number of years we think at least <coughs> But now this is just going to be for one year. Does it ever become back to ours, so, or we just I collect we're interest? We're always on. out. I mean, we're always. We're always going to. I have mean, we're going to deposit. Here. We deposit into the general fund. Mm -hmm. It's just that if somebody makes a claim and can prove their claim, okay. then we're just. Is that an audit finding? Is that a liability we have to show that two hundred and X number no. of dollars, thousand dollars, <laughs> potentially no. some percentage of people could come back and say, yeah. "I want my money." <laughs> but you have to think it's been with the state for 10 years I know but there's still is if there's no so, if there's no cutoff date then there is a some kind of liability I like the very vague and very little but there is some gentlemen we do have a, a motion and a second any further discussion Mr. Baum yes Mr. Charlie yes Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Uh, any other business that needs to come before our committee? Gentlemen, thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>